Hello. Welcome to Fountain of Love in Veruri, Sunday service. Today, that takes us to the sermon of today. Who will help us with Psalm 82, please? Psalm 82, 1 to 8, another person, John 10, 25 to 26. They're rather long, but we'll still try and quickly go through them. <coughs> Psalm 82, 1 to 8. Psalm 82. God presides in the heavenly council. In the assembly of the gods, he gives his decision. You must stop judging unjustly. You must no longer be partial to the wicked. Defend the rights of the poor and the orphans. Be fair to the needy and the helpless. Rescue them from the power of evil men. How ignorant you are, how stupid. You are completely corrupt and justice has disappeared from the world. You are gods, I said. All of you are sons of the Most High. But you will die like men. Your life will end like that of any prince. Come, O God, and rule the world. All the nations are yours. Thank you, man. John 10, 25 to 36. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not... And you do not believe the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of But you do not believe because you are not on my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than God. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and are one. Then you took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered him, many good works I have shown you from my father. But which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answer him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself God, Jesus answered him, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. If he called them gods, whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Do not say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because I said I am the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So Jesus was quoting from Psalm 82. Jesus was quoting from Psalm 82. And the look at uh, Psalm 82, verse 6, shows that the Hebrew word translated gods is Elohim. The same word used in Genesis 1-1, which usually means one true creator God, one true creator God. Today we're looking at dominion. We're looking at dominion. Psalm 82 verse 1 says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. He judgeth among the gods. And, and, and Psalm 82 Psalm 82, 1 to 6 shows that the word God can refer to people who are judging, people who have authority, uh, like, like, like judges, like magistrates, like such people who have been put in positions of authority and rulership. They wield power. They wield power. They are to be feared, but they derive their power from God Almighty. Sorry, when you see... At times I, I, I type something like that. It's the system that I use. It, it takes time. For, you have to press that thing, that arrow that, that moves up to, to make it capital G. Sorry about that. The wind power, or they are to be feared and respected, but they derive their power from God Almighty, who judges the old earth, who judges the old earth. And so, for example, in Exodus 7 1, in Exodus 7 1, it shows that Moses, as the messenger of God, was God's representative to the king. 
It was God's representative to the king, and God said, I have made you what? Can somebody help us read Exodus 71? See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. I have become your brother shall be your prophet. Okay, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, brother shall be your prophet. It shows that Moses, we know Moses was God's messenger, was going to deliver uh, God's message to, 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 to Pharaoh. And God is saying, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. The Hebrew word Elohim is translated judges in Exodus, uh, various places that you see, the Exodus 21, 6, Exodus 22, 8, Exodus 22, 9, Exodus 22, 28. Jesus claims to be son of God in the passage that we read. But the unbelieving Jews, they charge Jesus with blasphemy. They said, well, it's not because of these good works that we are saying anything, but it's because you are calling yourself son of God, you are making yourself as God. This is blasphemy. Jesus then quoted, he then quoted John, uh, Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 82, verse 6 for them. Jesus then quoted Psalm 82, verse 6 for them. To ask if God, if those in authority can be considered gods, then how much more? Can the one who, who, who God has chosen and sent, the one that really came from God, if amongst you, you have agreed with uh, Psalm 82 verse 6, you have been reading it for a long time, you have agreed with that, ye are gods, and now I am telling you that I came from God, and you are saying I am doing what? Blasphemy. I am blasphemy. What are you talking about here? What about that Psalm 82 verse 6? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Remember Genesis 3 5. Can somebody help us with Genesis 3 5? Can somebody help us with Genesis 3 5? Oh God, Genesis you know. <laughs> Go on, please. For God does know that in the day of ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm. Whereas, remember that video. Remember God had in, from the onset said, let us make man in our own image. And God went ahead to do so. <coughs> the devil manifested in the serpent and, and lies to Eve. Eve. Man had already been made in the image and likeness of God. Man had already been given dominion. In that Jeremiah 1, 1 5 that we read, before you were formed, I had ordained you and had made you prophet to the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. In Amen. fact, man lost authority after falling to Satan's deception. Man lost authority after falling to Satan's deception deception rather than gaining it they say your eyes will be open and you'll be like god and all that really man lost authority however jesus came he defended his claim to be the son of god on biblical terms on semantic terms just like the way we talk on semantic grounds normally what do we have in acts 11 26 something can somebody help us with that acts 11 26 and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Thank you. Barnabas found Paul. They stayed there with the disciples there. A whole year people were watching them and people decided to call them what? Christians. Christians. The disciples were first called Christians or little Christs. Or little Christ. Does that make them Christ as it were? No. And so we want to note that human beings are not Christ or God as in Almighty God. We're not. God is God. Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. But the assignment that has been given to us 
the way that he has made us, the gift, spiritual gift that he has given to us, helps us to, to, to work, to, to, do, to operate in certain um, uh, positions, to, uh, to, to do work in certain way, that others will say, that, ah, these ones are operating like Christ. These ones are Christians. Hallelujah. Amen. And so in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, God said, let us make man in our own image. And God went ahead and made man in his own image. And God gives two main instructions to human. He said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. I have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that uh, does what? Move it upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And so first is to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth, to populate the earth. And second is to have dominion or authority and then manage all the other creatures. Have dominion, have authority, exercise dominion, exercise authority. Humans were to subdue the earth and to become God's representative on earth. Subdue the earth, become God's representative on earth. So man's job of supervising or taking care of the earth was established. The different shades of sin that you can, of course, you have sin, transgression, iniquity, all of them sin. And rebellion caused God's creations to be placed under a curse for a time. You remember after that God sent man, Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden and mm -hmm. found certain curses and all that. But as we receive Jesus Christ, as we today receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are restored into man's former position of dominion, but also with the Holy Spirit in us this time. The Holy Spirit is in us this time. It's not like in the time of Samson when the Spirit of God will come upon him and then leave him again, and then the Spirit of God will come upon him and then he will kill one lion and all that. And then, no, the Spirit of God is in us now. As we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Yet, in a world where the devil the God of this world is still loose and influencing many things. He is still there. He's still there. And so you have that person, that individual, you and I, that we have received Jesus, that we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Uh, in, in a, let me give an example of somebody with a torch in a dark room. And so you come, you shine your own, you put on your switch on your torch. And then it shows in that direction. Let's say there are seven of us. And then in, in that dark room, or let's say that wall, we now sh oh, switch on our, our different uh, uh, torches. And so gradually we are doing what we are bringing light into our surroundings. Let's say you are in a very big warehouse. You switch on your own touch light. The other person switches on his own touch light. The next one switches on his own touch light, and on and on like that. Gradually, the warehouse is becoming brighter and brighter. Amen. Amen. As we receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are restored into man's former position of dominion, but with the Holy Spirit in us this time. Yet, in a world where the devil still loose and reflecting many things is. God has put us, final slide, God has put us, God has put us all, God has put in us all, God has put all rule and authority under the feet of his representative, which is man. God has put all rule and authority under the feet. Man fell, but the unique position of humanity in the plans and purposes of God was reinstituted by our Lord Jesus himself, by our Lord Jesus himself. And so we will want to read 2 Corinthians 5, 11 to 21. Uh, Sister Winifred, 2 Corinthians 5, 11 to 21. 2 Corinthians 5, yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 to 21. Yes. Okay. We know what it means to try the Lord, and so we try to persuade others. 
God knows us completely. And I hope that in your hearts, you know me as well. We are not trying again to recommend ourselves to you. Rather, we're trying to give you a good reason to be proud of us so that you will be able to answer those who boast about a man's appearance and not about his character. Are we really insane? It is for God's sake. Or are we sane? Then it is for your sake. We are ruled by the love of Christ. Now that we recognize that one man died for everyone, which means that all share in his death. He died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but only for him who died and was raised to life for their sake. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards. Even if at one time we judge Christ according to human standards, we no longer do so. When anyone is joined to Christ, he is a new being. The old is gone. The new has come. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. Our message is that God was making all mankind his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins. He has given us the message which tells us how he makes them his friends. 20. Here we are then speaking for Christ as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf. Let God change you from enemies into his friends. And the last one, 21. Christ was without sin, but for our sake, God made him share our sin in order that in union with him, we might share the righteousness of God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That somehow, uh, gives us a good summary of what uh, we've been looking at today. So we are ambassadors for Christ. As messengers for Christ, we are to speak the words of Christ Jesus and we are therefore Christ representative to people. We're therefore Christ representative to people. Of course, you will say, where is dominion here? If something wants to go wrong, what does the judge do? What does the magistrate do? It will say, oh, no, 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 I want to judge this case. This is not supposed to be that way. That's, that's, that's why you have like, is this Psalm 149 or Psalm 150, where the righteous, will do what will speak and, and, and condemn whatever that is wrong and, and put in place what is right. That is also part of the instruction that God said he had given to Jeremiah. If we had continued that Jeremiah 1.5 and we have gone further down, we will have seen that he told him that I've given you authority as well to uproot, uproot those things that are not good and then plant those things that are good. Hallelujah. Amen. So the question today is that do we realize the authority that we have in Christ Jesus? Do you realize the authority that you have in Christ Jesus? And are we using that, that authority and dominating as we should? Do we realize the authority that we have in Christ Jesus? As a child of God, as a Christian, do you realize the authority that you have? And are you using that authority? Are you dominating as you should? Remember the Bible passage that we read in the Sunday school, and then compare that with um, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and remember one contribution that uh, Brother Gwenga made, that if you are doing this, you have to do it in one particular fashion. You just don't say, I have this gift and I'm building my power and authority anyhow. So in that Galatians 5, uh, 22, 23, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Are we, are, are we operating with the fruit of the Spirit? Are we bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Are we bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Let us pray. Are we bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Let us pray. We want to thank God. We want to thank God for the position He has put a Christian. Are you a Christian? Thank God for the position that He has put you. We were saying, yes, everybody has got one spiritual gift or the other. And with Christ Jesus, that is reignited. That is brought back onto the forefront again. And it is left for you and I to, to stir up that gift of God that is within us and begin to use it 
begin to move to the glory of God Almighty in the name of Jesus. Make up your mind today. If you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, your opportunity now is, is, is calling on you. He is calling on you. The opportunity is here today for you to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to get away from the curse and begin to enjoy the blessings, the goodness that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, go ahead now and decide for Jesus. Go ahead and rededicate your life unto God Almighty. Go ahead and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Please forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. If you are deciding for Jesus, go ahead and pray that prayer. Go ahead and pray that prayer. And say, I surrender to you, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of all my sins. Oh, yes, Father, I pray for such people even now. Is there anyone who is surrendering his or her life to Jesus? God Almighty, please pardon that person. Remove their names from the book of death and write their names in the book of life, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there's anyone who is rededicating his life or life to Jesus, God Almighty, I ask that your spirit will begin to direct that person afresh. Your Holy Spirit will begin to direct that person on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us, oh God, as you are speaking to us, oh yes, that we should stir up that gift that you have given unto us. God Almighty, we pray that at the end, you welcome us into your kingdom as good and faithful servants. Those ones who have used the gift that you have blessed us with, they have used them even according to your purpose and will. Thank you, much, less Father. Continue with us, O God, in this service. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We've come to the end of the service. Let's just stretch forth our hands to the pastor. And thank God for the message that has come through him today. Um, and we're having dominion. Let's pray that the Lord Himself will uh, replenish every virtue that has left Him this morning. That the Lord will continue to speak through Him in the name of Jesus. So let's pray that on the last day, the word which He has taught us, spoken to us in various forms on Sundays and Thursdays, will not stand against Him on the day of judgment. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's yeah. not time for us to give our tithes, pay our tithes and give our offerings unto the Lord. Um, on the screen, on the screen you'll find all the details that you need. You may set aside your tithes and offering. Or um, such that when we are able to meet face to face, you can pay your tithes and offering, or you can pay into the church parish account. The details are given on the screen. Please remember to use today's date and your initials uh, and your or your church ID for offerings or and your tithes. The suggested references are given on the screen. Uh, God bless you as you give in the name of Jesus. If you have any chance, let us know. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you give Hallelujah. It, Amen. It's time for us to pray over the tithes and offering. Let's just raise up our tithes and offering. If we have them in an envelope, if you propose in your heart, just raise up your heart to the Lord. And bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for this types and offerings that have been raised up to you, either physically or spiritually. Father, we ask that you accept them all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Of glory, we pray, O oh God, that as many as are given or are proposing to give, Father, that you bless them immensely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give us seed to be able to sow into the kingdom of God, O oh God. Please, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I would like to give more. Father, please make a way for them. Bless them, O oh God. 
so that their heart desires to give more, they'll be able to do so in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Any that do not have to give at the moment, Father, we ask, oh God, that you yourself will give them, bless them, so that they'll be able to give next time, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Your name will exalt you. We thank you. Accept this offering, oh God, and this tithe, and let it be reduced for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. On earth. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. A few announcements um, that we have. Uh, we learned about different kinds of gifts. And one of the gifts that we are exhibiting in the church, they have an announcement for us today. The Facility Management Department has requested our presence at Edge Hill on Friday between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. if you are available so that we can go there and clean up, take down the Christmas decorations that are there. So as many as are able to make it without breaking COVID-19 travel rules, I encourage to go there in Jesus' name. So if you are able to go there without breaking COVID-19 travel rules, please do so on Friday between 9 to 12 a.m. That's the announcement I was given by the facilities department. The pastor asked me to also include, if you know that you cannot make it on Friday, Saturday is also available. Uh, so, please let, so, but please let Brother Benga know when you'll be going there uh, so that, you know, we just try to do things in a controlled fashion. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm also going to give this announcement. It's not written down, but it's Mother's Day on the 14th of March. So the mothers in the house, get ready. I don't know what we are going to do, but we have to do something, okay? <laughs> so, so, so the mothers in the house start thinking. I see you three weeks notice. So. We will have a meeting separately. We will have a meeting. I've given you three weeks notice. You can, you can play novelty match with the men. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a virtual one. It will be virtual now, Habi. We have a very quick short meeting. Or you can send uh, send me ideas uh, for something very simple that will not stress anyone. But you know, we have to. If, if you know that you can cook or I'll be delivering it, I, I I'm not I'm not suggesting anything for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all the mothers in the house, uh, just uh, be aware, it's 14th of March and it's Mother's Day. God will help us as we think of something really nice and simple to do on that day in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 So, Father, <laughs> and let us know and, and just come up with something. So, I for all the ones, so what uh, <laughs> Sister Shade has said is that we are the mother. So, the father should come up with something. So, fathers, over to you. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> three Sundays, we have three Sundays to come up with something to do so that uh, we will all be very happy of that day. <laughs> So that means mothers, you have more than three weeks to plan for that. So that means your own has to be extra special. Then we are giving them three weeks' notice. We have to three weeks. So, <laughs> hallelujah. It's for us to the service. I'll just like us to begin to bless the name of the Lord. To say, Father, we bless your name. Lord Jehovah, we glorify you. Lord Jehovah, we thank you. Um, let's begin to pray for the week that we are about to enter. For a couple of us in the different households, some of our children will be going back to school. So all those children that have been in, I think, up to primary three, mm -hmm. to school, and the ones that are in S4, S6, will be going back to school. Let's cover our children with the blood of Jesus. Let's ask that as many of our children 
that are in our midst that we go back to school, that the Lord will protect them, and the Lord will keep them safe. They will not catch any disease, nothing will touch them, nothing will harm them. Jesus. Let us continue to pray for our children that they start learning again, either physically or virtually, that the Lord will help them to understand everything that they will read, that the teachers will well, the students will listen well, and the Lord will get your mind in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for us workers, some of us are working with us, some of us are working with us, physically. Let's pray that the Lord will surround every one of us with his hedge of fire, that he will protect us, that no disease people can come on to adults will touch us in the name of Jesus. That the hedge of protection that has And please God help us every day of Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go in love, go joy. Fountain of love in Veruri. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Thank you and God bless you.